All right, let's get started. Thanks so much for joining. I uh, wish I had much better news than this, but it's, things are still down. We're going to talk about some workarounds and what can you do. Michael and Kim, they're going to be leading this meeting. I'll be there on the, on the call, but I, I can't share my screen or anything, so they will be sharing their screens. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Like Robert said, we... Unfortunately, do not have a whole lot of updates, but I know some of you received an email, if not most of you have received an email from Optum yesterday that I need to start the claim processing again. This is something that if you, of course, choose to stay with Change Healthcare, you'll have to fill out that little form. I think it has four or five fields. Not everything is mandatory. If it's not mandatory, you don't have to fill it, but I believe they are asking for your submitter ID and your IP address that is is going to, they will be receiving the claims from. With that being said, it, it we're still unsure on when that's going to come up. I'm going to share my screen so I can show you guys what the form looks like or whatever you have um, received. It, it looks like this. So the IP address is at the top. And this is basically your office's IP address. That's something that if you are unsure of, your IP can help you with. Or if you just go to what is my or IP chicken as the actual like bird.com will give you your IP address, your submitter ID. Again, anything that is a mandatory will have to be filled and sent out. But again, we still don't have an ETA on when change, change healthcare is going to be processing claims. We heard that it could be by next week. It's not a solid answer just yet. And at this point, I would encourage you to kind of start with the enrollment process and move to eMedics if you would like a full integration with Medisoft and Litech. That will help. Yes, there will be a delay or there will be a, an enrollment process. There will be an enrollment process that will be that will have to take place, but at least it will have to be it will be done once and for all. And you won't have to worry about if change healthcare is up and running or if you don't have to worry about any manual uploads or anything like that. So if you did receive that email, if you, again, if you wish to continue with Change Healthcare, go ahead and fill it out and send it. And there will be communication coming back from Optum, letting you know what the update on your account will be and when you can start sending claims. Aside Mike, do you want to wanna explain our prediction, why they want the IP address and what happened if they're in the cloud with us? The IP address is basically to something called whitelist, which is basically to make sure that you have, like, they know where your, the claims are coming from to try to prevent something like the cyber attack that happened or to prevent, like, unknown senders sending claims. If you're part of our cloud, then we can provide that IP address for you. That's something that our IP can handle with you. And if you, again, if you choose to fill that form, just let us know, and then we can help you with the IP part. But um, it's mainly just to make sure that the source of sending the file to them is legit, and it's not somebody that just goofing around and just sending whatever files or trying to gain access to their network again or to their database. So that's basically the update on the Optum email that came out yesterday. I know a few of you had reached out to us, but I wanted to make sure that whoever else that received the email and did not reach out to us gets an understanding of what this email means. How do you explain what they trying to do? Like the letter is coming from Optum and most people the letters... change healthcare. So explain to everybody what does it mean and why so Optum is basically yeah. So Optum is basically gonna be the processing engine for the claims. So basically United is working with Optum to use Optum's platform to process claims to basically get things back up and running. It does not really, you still technically, you're still part of Change Healthcare. You don't have to do enrollments. You don't have to do anything. The only thing that we will end up knowing about from you, most likely, if not Optum, which we have been trying to call and trying to get answers from, but we unfortunately have not been able to get a whole lot just yet, is the way you're sending claims. And the way you're sending claims, if you've used Capario before, which is now part of Change Healthcare, if you notice before, it used to be an automatic upload, but then it changed to manual upload and manual download of reports. There could be a possibility that this might happen and they require a manual upload with a new brand new password, a brand new mailbox, which is again, something that we can help you with, but it's gonna be a very extensive process to send claims. So they're gonna require more labor on your end to generate the claim files, send it, get reports, upload them into revenue management and ERAs and. So this is something that 
we don't know the answer to just yet. But if it does happen, then it will be, it will require work on, and it will require collaborative effort on both of our sides. Our tech team will have to redo the setup basically on your server and the process will be manual on your side to send claims. And that's why I'm encouraging you if you are not willing to wait, and I know there's going to be a wait on the enrollment side, which the hope is your payers that you're working with are not too intense to start the process with eMedic because it is fully integrated and there's none of this that's happening uh, that's affecting eMedics because we have clients on eMedics that have been able to send claims successfully and, and operate normally. So that's the optimum update so far. Okay, so let's recap this. So the letter that came in yesterday and we only had a few hours to figure it out and try to understand is initially we were scared that could be a hack because they asked if we have IP address and all of that, but it is legit. And we didn't have a lot of time to test it, but it's almost like a whole different cleaning house without re-enrolling. Exactly. So the Change Healthcare is using the Optum platform to submit your claim. But for MediSoft or Litec to be able to submit the claim, we have to reconfigure Revenue Manager to communicate with the Optum Clearing House. Then once they are back up and running, we have to change it again. So we're probably talking about an hour of labor in each time. Now, do we know if the EDI or the payer IDs is going to change or it's the same ones? We do not know that information just yet. There's no word on that part. Payer IDs, as as I've been told, have remained the same. The only thing that's changing will be the mailbox and the way that the claims are sending to Optum. Yeah, I would be really surprised and disappointed if they change the payer ID because if most likely they're using the change healthcare platform and technology <laughs> with the Optum engine. So they're using the Optum engine to, uh, to to receive the claims and send it. It's basically uh, a similar scenario like Ability. If you're using Ability temporarily to process your claims, you'll have to change the payer ID in Microsoft and or Litec. And then once this changes back up, you'll have to rechange them again. So it, it's a very similar I, I thought- scenario. Michael, I thought Ability is a portal that you manually upload the file. You don't have, that doesn't work. I didn't know that you can configure Revenue Manager to work with Ability as a temporary solution. There, we, we have, right? yeah, we. Yeah, we have made the change on for some of our clients that are using Ability temporarily because the header, which is the it's called an address box for Revenue Management. It needs to know where it goes. So there's some segments that have to be in place. And they have to be specific to ability. So that's when we set up a, a, a separate receiver for ability. So claim can basically, it, it's basically an address. It's an electronic address. So for it to know where it go, that it goes to ability, we have to set it to go to ability. So that's what we have been doing for some of the clients that chose to work with ability temporarily until change healthcare comes back up. And then they will use their original receiver. But it does require payer ID changes. Okay. So question, if people did not receive the letter, they still can do it even they didn't receive the letter, correct? That is absolutely correct, yes. It it all depends on what communication you have with Change Healthcare and or United Healthcare. So if you have not, if you have not received that message, you can go to... uh, How did the message was delivered to clients? I was told they to, to received emails. I believe Teresa is on the call. I think from Alliance Medical, I think she received a message. And I believe I have a couple of other clients, Josefa and another client of ours that just got an email that says, this is what we received. So if, if you is have anybody, is, yeah. is there anybody on the call that actually did it and, and successfully sending claims? Uh, and Sharon also received it. So let me, I am going to do, I'm going to copy the link into the chat for everybody to have access to. So if you are, again, if you're choosing to stay with Change Healthcare, you can go ahead and fill this out. If you are on our cloud service, go ahead and let us know and we can provide you with the IP address that you need. And if you choose to not change with Change Healthcare, then of course, let us know so we can start processing enrollment for eMedic to get you uh, going as soon as possible. All right, so here, let's slice this out. If you're going to change health, okay, you're going to move away from it, you will need, we need to configure Revenue Manager for you, but once and for all. We only need to do it once. 
if mm-hmm. you're going to do the temporary solution, then we're going to need to do it twice. We're going to need to switch it to, to the temporary method. Then after change healthcare is back with their normal routine, then we most likely, we're going to have to change it again. I doubt it if they're going to stay with, for the rest of their, their business. So now, if I was you, I'll probably at this point, which is I was trying to discourage you from doing or rushing to do it, I would probably change to eMedics now. It's taken a lot longer than I wanted to and you wanted to. And I know most of you hurting financially. I yeah, This is really damaging. And I wish I had I have a way to, to help any you, you, you financially or push a button that I can get you paid today. But at this point, I would move away. If you, if for whatever reason you don't want to move away, we will work with you. We will configure it twice, once to send to Optum and another one when after the dust settle and things back to normal, we will configure your revenue manager to go again to Optum. Yep. Any questions on the Optum platform and a temporary solution? We do actually have a bunch of questions that came in, so I'm going to go through them real quick. They're a lot similar to each other. So where do we find the submitter ID? So the submitter ID is in revenue management. This question is from Debbie. If you go to configuration... I will not touch touch the submitter ID. No, the the submitter ID is for the form to fill out. You have to provide a submitter ID. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to communication and revenue management and you go to communication, configuration, and then communications and revenue management, you will be able to see your submitter ID if can you, you or Kim? Can you or Kim do it on a on like a, on a tutorial data or something? Do we have uh, a sure? Kim, I believe has access, but I don't know if revenue management is configured because we can't really have a live connection. But at have. least walk through the steps to show which option on the menus. Kim, do you want to share your screen with Medisoft, please? Now, if you on Light Deck, it's similar options in Revenue Manager. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just going to go through some of the questions. Uh, Dr. Parikh, um, I just sent a link for the form. Same for Diane, same for Kim, same for Denise, uh, same for Niha. And then there's a question from Kim about how do we let you know? I am not sure what your question. Oh, I think I got a message. I got an email from you on the support side. Okay. Um, um, Mike, I have uh, the revenue management open. I'm just, I'm not familiar with the steps. Sure. You can tell me where to go. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to uh, configure and you go to communication. Your submitter ID, it's under user ID. So you will have, um, there's going to be a bunch of receivers in there because this is what revenue management has historically had. So you basically want to, for easy find of it, if you click on the user ID tab at the very top, that gray, yep. So you can sort, and then if you scroll all the way down or all the way up, you will see the submitter ID, which will be listed right there. So it will be either one letter and a bunch of numbers or vice versa, or just something completely different depending on when your submitter ID was created, but it will be under user ID one that will be your submitter ID. And I believe the name all the way on the left will match your receiver that you use every day, right? Exactly. All right. So, and the same goes for LiTech. Revenue management behaves the same way on both sides. A question from Teresa. Can you help with the submitter ID and how we connect? Yes, we can. I will make a ticket for you, Teresa, so we can go over and send you that information unless you are able to follow the steps from revenue management to pull the receivers out that you need. And if you have multiple receivers, if you have multiple submitter IDs, you will need to fill out the form multiple times depending on on the submitter ID. You should only have one, but if you happen to have two submitter IDs for any reason or another, you need to fill it out twice. Another question from Miriam. I did not receive it. Kathleen. So the link for anybody that has not received it, I'm going to bypass your question. The link is in the text, it is in the chat. You can just copy it and fill it out. Are you saying this is an alternative to waiting for MicroWise to be up and running? This question is from Annette. It's an alternative for Change Healthcare to go back up and running. So we don't know when Change Healthcare is going to be up and running. We don't know if they're going to be next week, next two weeks, the night. Nobody really knows. So this is basically the way that you can get your claims out temporarily. But like we mentioned earlier, there's going to be manual work that has to get done depending on how they would like to receive the claims. So if it's a manual upload, it will be a process and it will require changes in revenue management and then revert those changes back depending on what they decide to do later, unless you completely move to eMedics, of course, then that will be a one-time change. You don't have to do anything else. 
the enrollment involved. All right. This is today's update. We expect, yeah. So this is the update that we also received. We we don't know if this is true or not. They originally said we're going to be up and running on the 18th. Nothing had changed. You are part of a relay under the umbrella of Change Healthcare, along with multiple other cleaning houses. So if you would like to wait the weekend, which is tomorrow or Sunday, you can. And if you don't, if you're not able to send your claims, you can fill out the form on Monday or make a decision on Monday on what you are planning on doing. Now, the reason I'm not so optimistic, if they know that it's going to be a day or two or three days, I don't understand. Like, I, I won't expect them to give you a back door to submit your claims. I'm getting nervous that they coming with the back door to submit your claims. That means this is not a one or two day solution. It could be a week or two weeks. So I am just uh, speculating here. I don't have information or knowledge of why would they do that. So they're, they're giving you a back door to submit the claims. And that back door requires a couple hours of labor from our side and a little bit of your, from your side, other than the coordination and the training and all of that. So it is time consuming for us to do this for you, but I'm willing to do it to help out. And if you privilege uh, and you can wait another week or two financially, which is, I doubt that many people will be able to do that. Then you don't have to do anything. Just wait until you, uh, you hear better news, but most people cannot wait. Now, somebody might ask, what about timely filing? I am very certain that timely filing will be very easily uh, overcome here. I don't think timely filing is going to be uh, hard to uh, to dispute or to challenge. So, Robert, does that mean if we wait one or two weeks, this is definitely will be the final solution of the problem? It will be solved? It, logically, it, it should be. Now, I don't understand why they're giving us the back door now where they're saying that we th we... This week was supposed to be testing and submitting claims. So I'm afraid that they, to prevent another hack or they couldn't clean, like they couldn't clean up everything they should have, they're going to use the alternate method of sending the claims to Optum. Uh, I, I what, just, about solo, what about solo practitioner like me? Can we try it on our own? Michael, can we record it and have people follow the steps or? this confidential information about the practice that it's hard to record. Well, Robert, I have a question while we are waiting for Michael. This is Dr. Parikh. Are you guys going to be available on the weekend? Since we have, I see there are like hundreds of people here who are wanting to connect to eMedic. And are your technicians like Michael or Kim or others going to be available on the weekend to do this for us? Those who are available like us, I can come to the office and have one of your guys connect me to eMedic. So at least I can send a bunch of all the claims over the weekend and then stay with the eMedic until the system comes up. Yes or no? Under normal circumstances, I will say absolutely. And I will compensate my people to stick around over the week and, and help you guys out. But since this is happening a last minute and we don't have somebody to support us on the, on the, on the payer side or on the clearinghouse side, if we run into trouble, I hate to, to give you a false promises that I will stick around in, on the weekend and help you uh, where I might need help myself to make sure that this is working flawlessly and get into the, the, the payer. So maybe next weekend, if we're not able to solve it and, and help everybody during the week, which is most likely we won't be, I will make contingency plan to stay after hours or before hours and get everybody up and running because I know this is, could be very damaging financially to, to all of you, paying your payroll and paying your rent and paying your mortgage and everything else. I, I do understand and I'm, I'm yeah. really... Sorry to see you guys in this situation. Yeah, Michael, how do we tell you that I'm ready to do it? Is there an email or phone or 
Can we just tell you now that I'm ready to do it or how does it work? So the question we, is, who wants to be the guinea pig? Support because at microwise. Really... Mm -hmm. Say that um, again. It's, uh, Dr. Parikh, if, if you're talking about switching over to eMedic, if you want to do the change, I would send an email to support at microwise.com so that we can have uh, one of our client care reach out so that we can get everything taken care of, we can get the process started, and we can get you going with eMedic. And that would be a temporary solution. Is that correct? No, eMedics no, would be... E would be a change completely. Oh, so then we won't be dealing with you guys or you would still be involved? No, we, You would yeah, be dealing e with us, but it's the change of the clearinghouse. So you would no longer be using Change Healthcare. Instead, you would be using eMedics with us. eMedics is the, clear, the competing clearinghouse to Change Healthcare that was recently purchased by Medisoft. So Medisoft actually owns eMedics, and this would only happen about two, a year and a half ago. So I'm changing the clearinghouse to another clearinghouse that is owned by Medisoft rather than Change Healthcare. Exactly. Correct. Uh -huh. And so I can I not switch back to the uh, one that we have? If you switch, you're not going to be switching back. Oh. Okay. The Optum is the only temporary solution that's owned by Change Health. So Optum owns Change Health, and if you go that direction, most likely it is temporary. But I want a temporary solution, so Optum would be the temporary solution, correct? Exactly. We think and, it's yeah. a temporary solution. They didn't give us enough information. We know that Optum owns Change Health. And, that's, and it's for the Optum that you gave us that form, is that correct? Yes. That form is for Optum which is the back door for change health to get around the problem. And is that a painless process or is that a painful process? Okay. If it's a temporary... Nobody like has done it yet. We think it's going to take an hour to do it for you now. Okay. And most likely another hour to... If you... If we need to switch back, if this is... They didn't tell us this is a temporary solution or it's going to be permanent solution. They didn't give us any information. We were sh surprised to see the letter coming from our uh, clients and they did nobody told us that this letter is going out we didn't even know if this letter is legit or not so we had to investigate we found out that it is legit but we haven't had it this is we only found this out yesterday about 3 p.m and we only had a few hours to gather information and to verify that it's legit and there's nobody trying to to hack your computers with the ip address and everything so it is legit. We don't know if it's a temporary and it's or a permanent solution. We don't know that yet. So okay. I'm saying it's going to be temporary, but I could be wrong. So you guys can do it for us if we want to do it. And it's uh, relatively painless and we can jump back to the normal process what we have been doing after we get done with this temporary solution. And... It, it does require manual labor on your side, Dr. Parik. So that the way they're sending the claims they will most likely require a manual upload. And if, due to, if they do require a manual upload, then you as the office will have to be, will basically go over the process with you. So you how to upload the claims and how to download reports. So it is, it's not, there is work that needs to get done to set up. The sending process is not going to be you click and then the claims go and then you click and then reports come down. There's going to be a manual process on yeah. your end until we figure out if it's going to be this is it for good, or if it's going to change and it comes back the old way. But again, nobody knows anything just yet. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, scare you when you hear manual process. The manual process is two or three steps that it will probably take about a, a, a minute. But it's not like a touchless. It's not like click send claims and boom, the claim sent. There will be a file. Then you there will be a portal that you log into the portal and upload the file. And when you get your payment, there will be a download of the file and import that file inside Revenue Manager, where all of this happens to you inside Revenue Manager when you're sending or receiving reports. So now, is it worth the, if you're going to go with the temporary solution, is it worth the extra work? Absolutely. If you want to get paid now, it, it absolutely it's worth it. And I'm willing to sacrifice the labor to help you guys out. And I'm sure you should be willing to do the extra work to get paid sooner. So you have not done this yet on any no, we of found clearing. we only found about we done it with other clearing house. So we know what it what's in detail with other clearing house that it's not a partner clearing house.
uh, it, like question, there's, you know, there's over a hundred different clearing houses, and not every clearing house uh, uh, integrates and communicates with revenue manager flawlessly. Uh, we only pick the few that they do. So we don't. We most likely this one. It's not because it's not something that revenue manager was written for to communicate with. This is like a backdoor thing. So we assuming that this is going to work like like an external clearing house that it's not a partner with revenue manager and Medisoft and Lightech. Got you. Uh, so, question. Uh, uh, so my question is, how about if I just have you guys do this, connect me, send the claims for the last five weeks, and then disconnect it. So at least my five weeks of work is gone one time, and then I can wait for another two weeks. Does that sound like a crazy idea? No, no. I, I, if you're going to do it, then just keep doing it until got you. Until you, we know uh, what's the next step. Got you. Okay. So, yeah. don't, so we don't do, do actually have a lot of questions to get through. So sure. if you have any other questions, sure. if you could just put them into the chat for us. Sure. Um, sure. That'd be great because we do have about 25 questions that are still waiting right. from 20 minutes ago. Okay, Dr. <laughs> I Dr. See Barik mentioned, questions. Okay, Dr. Barik mentioned something about the five weeks and things like that. For me, I can wait for one or two weeks. But meanwhile, can we put all the claims and upload it and wait until you give us the green light to start pushing it into the system? Yes, yes. Sure. So we can do all the claims in there and leave it uploaded until we hear from you, hopefully within one week or two weeks, as you mentioned before. He said, I can wait one or two weeks. So if you're going to wait, I will wait until I know more information about the Fixing the way you're set up now to submit claims. Okay. But uh, meanwhile, uh, we can enter. We can upload. Yeah, can, you can enter yeah. your claims. Yeah. yeah, you can enter your claims. Yeah, normally. doctor, you can you can enter all of your information into Medisoft, and then once you know if the clearinghouse is back online, or we do another setup for you, you can send all of your claims out at that point. But let us get back to the questions that we have because we have people that have been waiting for about twenty minutes now to get their questions answered. Okay. Okay, Kim. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. So the next question we have is from Teresa saying, what about remittances? Well, we get remittances the same way. We have another way of submitting claims, but we need the remittances to be available in revenue management report. Mike, do you have any insight on that one? Are you still with us? Okay, so I'll answer that. So the remittance will be happened similar to uploading the claim manually. You will be downloading uh, the ERA manually and import the ERA into revenue manager. So it's about... It's a two, three uh, clicks or steps. It's not as, as touchless as the way you, you've been used to it in the past, but it's not the end of the world. I, you will learn it and it will take a few clicks. It's not the, it's not the end of the world. So, and add to so, that, sorry, add to that, assuming the file comes in and it's an 835, it cannot be a PDF. It has to be an actual 835 to be imported into revenue management to be able to do auto posting and typical process that you used to do before. They just to be clear, I so we're submitting claims to another clearinghouse that we already work with, like to Medicare. So from what I understand, the 835 should come in just as they were through the same clearinghouse. We haven't changed that. So I'm just wondering through this when you process. Say, when you say to the same clearinghouse, are we talking about the clearinghouse that you changed to or... We don't well, have we, a change healthcare we, we are only sending the claims through another clearinghouse, but the remittances, we've left the same. Okay, so if the remittance, they're going to come through Optum as temporary, then you would have to, we will have to download them from Optum. If you're see, going okay. to wait until change healthcare is fixed, then that's a different story. So I'm not sure if, I'm, if, if we're on the same page. Yeah, I guess it's just we'd have to wait and see what happens with these remittances because we don't know at this point. Now, what, that... what we need to figure out, if Change Health is using Optum as a backdoor, would, would I be able to see my ERA or 835 now in Optum if I have a login? And I don't have the answer for that, but there's very much possibility that this can happen. Okay. Thank you. It looks like we have quite a few questions here about changing over to eMedics, how long it will take, things like that. So I'll just go through some of the basics with eMedics. First of all, the best thing to do if you either want more information or if you know already that you want to start the change to eMedics, you can call our 
client care team, it's going to be our main phone number, um, which I'll put into the chat for everybody. And it's option number one, or you can send us an email and we can reach out. The process for eMedic, once you sign up, it can take two to four business days for the order to be processed for us to get you a submitter ID with them. And then at that point, we can get your software set up to be able to submit claims. Most of your commercial carriers can start going out as soon as we get everything set up. The main ones that we're going to be concerned with that will need enrollments to get your claims out is going to be Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE, some Blue Cross Blue Shield carriers. Those can take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, depending on the carrier and how quickly they process. After we get your claims enrollments done is when we would begin focusing more heavily on your ERA enrollments. The biggest thing for us right now is just to be able to get your claims out the door, get your claims processing so that you can start getting some money, and then we can worry about making sure that we can collect your ERAs from wherever they're coming in at that point. So I think that covered quite a bit um, about Change Healthcare. And then we'll get that phone number put into the chat for you as well. Let me see. I'm changing to eMedics and we'll be waiting to send claims to eMedics. Will I receive ERAs from Change Health once they're up and running? So that's actually what Robert just addressed. We're not 100% certain what's going to happen with the ERAs from Change Healthcare. I think pretty much everything with Change Healthcare. No, I, I think just... I, I'm not sure if they, I, let's read that question again, please, Kim. So uh, Kathy was asking if she'll receive the ERAs from Change Healthcare once they're up and running again. Yeah, uh, yes. So she's in the process of changing over, but the ERA enrollments are not done yet for eMedic. Oh, I see. Okay, yes. Yeah. So the ERA will come from the clearinghouse that you had the relationship with until the cutoff date. Yeah, but the clearinghouse she was with was Change Healthcare. Yeah, then it will, all the old claims, it <laughs> will come and Change Healthcare until you make the switch to the ERA with the new clearinghouse. Can I just ask a question? It seems like the ERAs are not as much of an importance of, as of sending the claims to change healthcare. So I was thinking that they were going to be able to yeah. spit out maybe your ERAs, but I didn't know where they were going to go. That was one of my questions too. But once I changed the email, yeah. we're going to stay change. We're going to stay with change for a while. I'm going to keep them just to get okay. my ERAs, and then I'm in the process yeah. of ring medics. So I can do the both correct until I'm truly yeah. up with medics okay so we can do that yeah absolutely so that's pretty much um what the idea is that we're focusing on at the moment for a lot of clients is just getting the claims enrollment done making sure claims are going out the door and then once we finally have everything changed over to e-medics and you truly do not need change healthcare anymore then you just cut it off and then you'll be good to go with e-medics moving forward Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Robert. Absolutely. And Michael. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question uh, regarding eMedics? How much is it? Is there, um, there's a charge I'm not to change sure if over. We have right? any of our salespeople on the line? I think it's, it's almost the same price as what you're paying now with Change Healthcare. There's, it's about $120. Yeah, it's, very, it's very close. Yeah, it depends on the package, but I believe that the pricing is close, if not the same. It is. It's not going to be more. It's a, it's very much the same. To install it as well, to set it up, is there? Yeah, a to set it up, we're gonna waive almost half the in the the setup time. They set up uh, cost. We going to I'm gonna give you credit for the one month of EDI. So for the normal price for the first doctor is two ninety five, and you probably pay about one hundred and twenty for a full suite of uh, Change Health. So you will we will be deducting the one twenty from the initial cost. If you have multiple doctors, multiple MPI, the the initial cost will it's two ninety five for the first one and I believe it's about a hundred and fifty for each MPI until unless you have like something like I have practices that have 70 MPI. I'm not going to charge you 150 times 70 MPI. It will work out uh, a deal for you guys. So depending on how many MPI you have. So talking about the credit robot are we going to get the credit automatically or I have to call my credit card and tell them to hold it or how is it going to do? Because now we have the credit, should be credit for half of February and the beginning of March, I found there was another billing for my credit cards. And I don't know if this is continue. Yeah, do me a favor. The if the charge is coming from microwise, don't dispute it from, uh, from your credit card. 
because that hurts me with my credibility with the credit card company. I will work it out with you. If it's coming directly from Change Health or Capario, then do whatever you want. No, it comes directly from you, say the Microsoft. Okay, then don't dispute it. I will work it with you. Okay, no problem. So, and will I expect another charge on every credit? Because usually I'll, 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 yeah, the, the, the automatic charges will happen unless you cancel because I, I but I don't want to take everybody's time from that. The finance, I'm going to take care of you. I'm not going to cheat anybody. I will let fi the finance department give you that. But most likely the charges will go on normally. Then you will be credited for the downtime that you were down. Unless you okay, were, sure. you go, you upgrade, uh -huh. you move into eMedics. I'm going to apply that credit toward your setup. So that would be the easiest way for me to do. I told you I'll wait the one or two weeks, but I'm asking okay. about am I going to see a charge or not? Then if the charger comes, no problem, because you said that you will automatically send it to my credit. I'll, I'll make sure things are right for you, but let's get ahead and, and uh, answer the... Uh, Kim, you want to read the rest of the questions? Absolutely. So another one we have is if we do the temporary change, is there work for MicroWise to do on the system? before the submissions. Yes. So that I'm not sure if this question came before we were discussing this, but we do need to set up the revenue management to be able to do that changeover, I believe uh, we were saying, right? Michael, you still there with us? We might have cut out for a minute. Let's see here. The optum form. What's the answer to the question? How do you connect with us? I believe if you are using a change healthcare with us, it is the FTP connection. The next question from Lindsay, it was my understanding the new clearinghouse they're using will be the new change healthcare and isn't temporary. Oh, oh wait a minute. Uh, uh, say that again. They said it was my understanding that the new clearinghouse they are using will be the new change healthcare and is not a temporary fix, basically. Okay. How certain are you from that information? Who who mentioned who said that? That was Lindsay Cosmet. I'm probably okay. pronouncing that incorrectly. Lindsay, how you want to unmute yourself and tell us how did you know that? Hi, everyone. I read that on one of the status updates. I don't know if it was United Healthcare or Optum site, but it said that they were going to be switching to this new system that they had rebuilt. That's all what the testing was supposed to be this week and that everybody was going to be moving to that. And it didn't sound like it was temporary, like we would be going back to change. Okay. If this information is accurate, then that's actually good news because that means it's not temporary. That means I'm not doing the work temporary. Then I'm going to switch you back to the old platform. So that will be actually good news. And that will make sense because if it's temporary, then that would have been really stupid to give me a temporary after me waiting all this time. Let me try to mm -hmm. find it and I'll email it to you guys. I hope it's That'd right. And if it's right, it's actually good news. The only bad news about it is revenue manager is going to work with it the way it worked with Change Health, or it's going to ask you to upload the file manually and download it manually. Okay. The next question that we have here, saying I've been entering all my claims but not submitting them. Will they still be there when Change Healthcare is up and running? If you mean you've been entering them into your software, absolutely they will be there and they'll be ready to submit when they are back. If um, what Lindsay is sharing with us is is true, then what we, we Optum is going to be a permanent solution, not a temporary solution. So we'll have to wait for that information from Lindsay if she can grab it and send it over to us. Okay. Who do we submit this form to if we didn't receive an email? So the form that you're filling out, the link that uh, Michael put into the chat, is it's just a submission form on the webpage, I believe. So you would fill that in and submit it and it would go to them. Next question from Kim, is eMedic actually going to change over that quickly if we switch? I heard sending claims this weekend, don't we have to re-enroll? So signing up with eMedic, once we get your submitter ID, you can submit once the submitter ID is set up and active on your software. You only have to re-enroll in carriers that require enrollment for claim submission, which is generally your government carriers, Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE, some Blue Cross Blue Shield, but we can get more information on that for you. If you do switch over, we can let you know which carriers require that enrollment and generally how long that enrollment takes. Next question, if we enroll with eMedics, can we switch back to change once they're back up? Generally not. I wouldn't. No, no don't do that. that. You don't want to do that. No. If you're e planning on changing over to eMedics, I would plan on doing it permanently. Uh, uh, eMedics is a great clearinghouse. It actually works better. 
the interface works better because it's written by the same company as Medisoft or Litec. I would I do not use it as temporary. Changing clearing house is big deal. You don't want to be flipping between clearing house like that. Then no, if you're going to move with eMedics, it should be permanent, not a temporary solution. Only Optum, it might, but it sounds like Optum is the way, the new way that we're going to be sending through Change Health because of the hack. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. If we switch over to eMedics for claims, how can we see which claims got processed in Change Healthcare before the hack? So if you are switching over to eMedics, there is not a way to see that from eMedics. The information that you'll be seeing in eMedics is going to be the claims that you begin submitting through that platform. If your ERA enrollments are completed, you will be getting remittances from those claims potentially, but you won't be able to follow up on claim status through eMedics on claims that were submitted by Change Healthcare. Okay, we haven't tested that yet, but logically, if Optum is the new way of submitting claims, it will be the new way of receiving the ERA. So logically, you should be getting the ERA from Optum, okay, regardless if you're going to stay with it or not, you should be getting your ERA from there. Unless you have an alternate method to receive ERA, I know some people have a way to get it from Net or what's the other one, Kim? Ability. Yes. Like the portal? But again, that yeah, that's not usually all payers, but some practices receive their ERA from Avilci or Nevenet. Okay. Can we switch to the temporary solution if we're still on version 22? Wendy, that I don't believe that should be a problem. We would just have to configure the revenue manager. Now, let, correction, we're not sure yet if this is temporary mm -hmm. or it's going to be permanent. So from, yeah. from the information that somebody shared with us on the meeting, that it's possible that it's a permanent solution, not a temporary solution. Okay. Next, does eMedics work with LiTech revenue management? Absolutely. It is fully integrated with LiTech. Sorry, I just wanted to add something. If you are also doing eligibility, eMedics will be your only option because it's integrated If and you don't have to do eligibility on the portal manually and you put in every patient information and then you run eligibility. So if you do have scheduled tasks that typically runs overnight to run eligibility for your patients for next day of service, eMedics will be the way to go. Just wanting to make sure that you, I have the eligibility part covered. Absolutely. Next, do we have to fill out the form for each submitter ID separately? Yes, I believe so. Right, Mike? Yes, correct. Yes. We help you with uh, the enrollment. We, our goal is to make sure that your enrollment are bulletproof so they can go out and you don't come back with any missing information so we can speed up the enrollment process. Okay, next one we have here from Kim. You can see your ERAs and Optum. I'm just not sure how to download. That's a point there, Kim. Thank you so much. What's the cost to go with the temporary solution? I don't believe they said anything about a price for that. No, she's probably talking right. about our setup. If you have support, we're not going to oh. charge you. For it. If you have any type of support from Microwise, that's not a page you go. If you have like a cloud or, or gold or platinum, you, I will not charge you for this. Okay. To clarify, an eMedics enrollment will take two to four business days. Uh, no. That is, that's, no. So from the point that we get you guys started with eMedics, it can take us two to four business days to get the submitter ID ready. And then from there, we would have to configure your revenue management. And at that point, we would be able to submit claims to carriers that do not require enrollment. Okay. Will we get a credit for the month we have been unable to bill? Yes. So you will be... If you're switching Clearinghouse, I will apply that credit to reward your enrollment fee. That will be the easiest way. If you stay in and you're not switching, I will credit you for the month. And hopefully it's only one month. Hopefully things were, I'm assuming since they came up with uh, Optum, if the information is true, looks like this is the new way. And now they switching their channel to Optum. Okay, let's yeah. Is it possible that it might take another one to two months to fix the problems by change healthcare? Nobody knows. We think that the Optum is the new way. It would only make sense that's a new way. I am not 100% certain, but it looks like that could be the new way of sending claims. If you're going to stay with change health. The next we have from William, 
But yes, William, if you need assistance getting 837, I would definitely email support or call our support line so that we can we can help you with that. Karina, it looks like Karina is having some trouble with that form for Optum. Uh, Michael, what do you suggest? She's saying that it's asking for the EMF login. So the EMF login is actually where we went in revenue management under configure and then communication. The first column is the user ID and then there's a password right next to it. That's your EMF login. So that's the username and password for everybody to send claims. So if you grab those two numbers, then that's your username and password. But usually they should find out by the submitter ID for you. They shouldn't really need the full login, but if this is what you're looking for it's under revenue management. So, so Michael, if they ask him for the username and password, mm -hmm. there's a big chance that they will make their platform works without you have to change anything on the manager other that, than the IP address. That, that is absolutely correct. We don't know because we, we have not filled out that form. So the, and we won't really know what the answer to that until we hear from clients that these are the changes that they want. So you might not need to make any changes. You might not need to do anything. All they have to know is where the claims are coming from, which submitter ID, and then we're done. Or they might ask for, now we're uploading separately or we're sending claims separately. And that's when we're going to start making changes to revenue management. So it's a 50, 50% 50 chance of making changes versus more of an FYI. I think that's a very volunteer to be the first one. So why don't we do that? And then we have, we will send an update to everybody on what we discovered. Absolutely. So when we're done with this call, let's try it. I don't know how long they will take to set us up because it looks like we're sending them the username and password and your IP address. So they want to make sure that they, the information is coming from the same IP address they said you, who you are. The only yeah. problem if you have a dynamic IP address, then that will, dynamic means yeah. the IP changes. Yeah. Now, if you're in cloud, if you're in our cloud, then it's, it is a static, it's not dynamic. So yeah. you're not going to have a problem. And, and it, if they ask him for that information, logically, it looks like they're going to make the switches on their end to, to, to receive the information from you. Exactly. Just keep in mind that this email was pushed out to almost everybody in the nation that has changed healthcare. So hopefully you'll hear something. I don't know how fast their turnaround time and is. Let's, let's figure look, it yeah. out today and we'll inform yeah. everybody on Monday of the finding. So we have a volunteer. Dr. Parikh is going to volunteer to, uh, to try this on his system. Hey. One of the few last questions, eMedics, will it work like Change Healthcare did before the hack? If you mean in terms of your process of submission, yes, you, it, it submits directly. Mm -hmm. The portal is a little bit different, but it still gives the same information. You could follow up on your claims, your rejections, denials, all of that good yep. stuff. Let's see. Can you prepare a summary of options and send an email? Sure. I'd be happy to send another email out. We can do that with the recording. We're going to send out the recording anyway. So we can put all their options in the email. Yeah, but having it written, it's a lot less confusing than try to interpret everything we said. And I'm saying the, the, the summary, yeah, yeah, we're adding the summary to the recording email. Yeah. They'll be getting everything in one neat little package. Let's see here. The Optum form is asking, oh, for the EMF login. We already touched on that. Lorraine is asking, how do I get my IP address? If you go to... Lorraine, are you, I don't know your practice off the top of my head, but if you are on our cloud, we can provide you with that IP address. Just go ahead and send us an email to support at microwise.com. And if you are not on our cloud and you have your data hosted locally, if you go to, if you open up an internet page, type in www.ip and then chicken, as in the bird, .com, it will give you your IP address. If you do okay, have an okay. IT person. So let me actually, I'm going to do that on my computer. But I want to warn you with the uh, things. Make sure you're not remote. If you are remote, you want to do this on the same on the same uh, computer or the same server that your Medisoft is on. Okay. So you want to do it really on the. If you are in a local network, then it doesn't matter which computer. But if you are remoting from home to a server, then that's going to be tricky. If you're on our cloud, we'll provide you that IP address. Thanks. Karina is stating that they submitted the form, and if she hears from them, they'll let us know. And the last thing that we have is from Rita. Karina had sent the latest update from Change Healthcare that was uh, talking about the Relay Exchange being back up this weekend. 
which I believe we had mentioned at the beginning, but uh, Mike, if you want to just touch on that again, because they were saying that Relay Exchange should be back up by the 23rd. Everybody see my screen? So I went to whatismyipaddress.com and this is the IP address that I have, okay? So now the, so that's what you need to do. But if you're, make sure that you are in the same network as the server. If you're in our cloud, we will give you that IP address. And if you, if you're remoting from home, do you need to do this on the server, not on your local computer? Okay. Mike, are you still in here with us? Yes, I am. There you are. Sorry. So Rita had mentioned a post that Karina had put into the chat here. That was the latest update from Change Healthcare. That was basically showing that they were going to have the relay exchange back up on the 23rd. If you could just explain again, what we're assuming that to mean. That's basically, so the update that we have is the same, but we just don't know if it's actually going to be up and running on the 23rd or not. They said that it's going to go up on the 18th. Of course, nothing happened from the 18th until now. So if change is going to be back up and running, I would just encourage you to send your claims. Don't send a whole lot, send one or two, make sure they get received. Make sure you get reports. Also try to log into connect center and see if you're able to log in. Uh, If you're unable to, then it looks like I believe somebody had mentioned that Optum is going to be the moving forward clearing house. So if that's the case, then we'll have to process. Everybody has to fill out the form for Optum, but we unfortunately don't know if the 2030 is going to be across the board. I know they are, they also got affected with prescriptions because Relay pro- or Change Healthcare processes prescriptions. So there, some of the services are coming up, claims we don't know just yet what the game plan is going. Now, it makes so sense to- that the Optum is the new solution. It's not a temporary solution. It's about to make sense to me because it's so odd to give you a temporary solution after waiting all this time. So it looks like this, the opening that back door and they asking you for your login information and your IP address so they can transition you to submit the claim through the back door. And look like it, yeah. they're going, this is the new way of sending claims. And hopefully that it doesn't require a lot of labor to do that other than, than sending your information through, the, through that form. Which also means if they're going to do Optum, then you're going to be using the website. You're not going to be using Connect Center. That's just my guess. But it all depends on when the fi- when you fill out the form. Hopefully, Dr. Parikh can tell us what communication he gets back and what the expectations are from sending claims. And then we'll inform everybody on what the new process or how claims are going to go through Optum. Okay. So there, I think we're repeating ourselves over and over. So we go and we have a volunteer. We're going to fill the form. I don't know how long they're going to respond uh, to, to enable that the IDs to work. It might be right away. It might take a, one or two days. So we don't know yet. We go, We have a volunteer. We're going to do that. And maybe I, we can do this with multiple volunteers. Then as soon as we know the answer, I'm going to host another meeting and inform everybody what they need to do. If all we have to do is submit the form, and what you have, the setup that you have now is going to submit your claims, then that will be the best thing other than fixing what you have without touching anything. So it Correct. looks like the back door is the way to go to, for the, the, to fix this. So we're going to, we're going to end the meeting shortly. We're going to, I rather work with the volunteers to submit their forms. And so this way I have answers for you sooner than later. Okay. So let's end it uh, now and look for an email for Monday or Tuesday. As soon as I have information that claims went out, I will inform you guys and I'll help everybody to to move over to either the new the uh, eMedx Clearinghouse or the Change Health backdoor, which is up. Okay? So thank you so much, everybody, for your patience. Thank you for your business. And we've... We're together in this uh, disaster here and we'll come out of it. And what doesn't break us is going to make us, you know, stronger. So thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend. And uh, Dr. Freak, somebody's going to reach out to you and uh, do the uh, the form. And we'll hopefully we have an answer to everybody sooner than later. Okay, guys. Yep. Have a wonderful